So, hello, I'm excited to be here with all of you. Um, we are going to be learning about painting leaves today, and we're going to be learning um, a little bit about medicinal plants as well. Um, so, yeah, I'll jump right in with introducing myself. My name is Mira O'Brien. I'm actually the founder of the Berlin Drawing, as well as the instructor. Oh, 100 people. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm the founder of the Berlin Drawing Room, as well as also the instructor for the Botanical Watercolor Workshops. So we also have workshops on other themes, but um, this is my focus. So I don't know. I mean, with smaller groups, we do very a very personal introduction round, but I sort of feel like um, like that might take up a little bit too long um, of our time with a hundred people. So um, let's see. Why don't we do it this way? Can you? Can everybody who wants to participate? Can you just um, introduce yourself into the chat? So type in like um, where you're from and um, yeah, where you're joining us from. Like I put Berlin. So I'm joining from, I'm here in Berlin actually. I'm American, but I'm, oh cool. So Hamburg, Italy, Romania, Finland, Canada. Switzerland, Massachusetts, US, US, India, Denmark. Oh, wow, wow, wow. England, Quebec, Scotland, Istanbul, Bend, Oregon, Prague, New Zealand. Okay, we really got it covered. I think this is, um, wow. I mean, sorry, I'm just, I'm amazed with the number of people and also the, the range here because we usually get a lot of people from, from Germany and a few people from the US, but this is really, really everywhere. Kreuzberg, yay, I'm in Kreuzberg. Hi, Christopher. Carmen from Spain, USA, San Francisco, that's where I'm from. Um, wow, 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 wow. Cool. Um, okay, thank you everyone for sharing. San Diego, oh, I wish I was there right now. Um, Berlin, okay. Oman, I think it's the first time I ever had somebody from Oman in one of my classes. Susan, you're so welcome. Um, this is fascinating. I'm definitely going to read through all your notes in the chat again when the class is over, um, just in case I miss anything. Um, and, but I do, I do want to get to the material without too much ado because I have prepared um, a short introduction for you about our specimen today. So um, one logistical thing first, was everybody able to access the um, Dropbox folder with the, with the images? Yes. Because I can also add them. I'm also going to drop the files. Let's see, is it easy for me to do this? I'm going to put the files in the chat. It takes a minute for them to load. Um, so I'm doing this now because I, I learned from other classes. This actually only works once everybody has already joined the class. So I think one is in there. One is loading. Let me see if it lets me load the other one. Now. Oh, so they're both loading. I don't know if you can see them until they're done loading. There's no fancy file name actually, um, but there are two JPEGs. 
that are loading in the chat. And those are the only two images you need for the class. So they're pretty big files, it'll take a minute. But by the time I'm done with my introduction about the plant, then it should be finished. So, and yeah, maybe in the meantime, because I don't have it so handy, if somebody is, can add the Dropbox link into the chat, that would be really helpful if somebody's on there right now because I wanna set up this slideshow for all of you now. Um, oh, thanks, Alex. Um, okay. So can everybody see the slide that says Alcamila vulgaris? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. So if you've already downloaded the image or um, if you're about to, this is the plant that we're going to draw today. Um, and I mean, I chose it for a couple of reasons. One reason is because I thought that um, it had a quite good structure for talking about the veins in the leaves and how to paint them um, and the combination of light veins and dark veins. So a good technical subject. But um, in my botanical watercolor courses, I also really like to focus on um, like plants that are often considered weeds or um, just kind of common everyday local plants that you could potentially find um, where, where you live, like just walking down the street or, or maybe in your garden or in a local garden. Um, and this is definitely one of those plants. So it's a wildflower, it can be a weed, and it's also a medicinal plant. And this is one of my favorite combinations in a portrait of a plant because I think that sort of mundaneness of it, it makes you easily forget about it. Um, but then it has like these kind of magical properties that um, once you know about it, it makes you sort of see it in a new way. And of course painting it makes you see it in a new way. So I think it makes it particularly apt also for a painting subject in that way. So um, this is commonly known as a lady's mantle or in German Frauen mantle. And um, it's a member of the rosacea family, which includes roses, cherries, raspberries, apple, strawberries, um, lots of edible and medicinal plants actually. Um, I think with this one, it would be quite it's pretty hard to tell that it's from that family though because it doesn't have in it doesn't have a fruit in the way that a lot of these others do and yeah here we have um a really nice image of um this plant from the, the flora von deutschland osterreich und der schweiz um from the 19th century So this, um, the history of botanical illustration is also the history of medicinal plants because this was the original purpose of botanical illustration um, to provide a guide for physicians, um, healers, apothecaries um, in order to be able to use this information and collect the plants. So, um, this plant has historically, of course, I'm, I'm absolutely not trying to advise anyone on anything medicinal. So you can just, um, 
think about what I'm saying from a historical perspective. Historically, this was used for a lot, <clears throat> a lot of different things, including treating wounds, anti-inflammatory, <coughs> excuse me, and um, particularly with issues related to women, which I think is probably where the name ladies mantle comes from. So you can see, this is quite an old illustration, um, probably an engraving from 1563. So Kreuterbuch, like a herb book, is um, what that means. Um, I really thought this was a, a very particularly lovely, especially for what we're going to be focused on today, the leaves, particularly lovely illustration from um, a very interesting Italian naturalist, um, Ulisse Aldrovandi. And um, he was the founder of the Botanical Garden in Bologna, also um, quite a cabinet of natural curiosities there. And um, yeah, he did a lot of scientific illustrations. And also, um, if you are curious, write down his name, some very, very fantastical um, illustrations of monsters and such as well. But here you can see he really emphasized the, the, the front and the back of the leaf is two distinct colors. Um, which is something that we will um, talk about when we get to the technical side of things. And another interesting fact is that alchemilla comes from the word alchemy. Um, so the name of the plant. Vulgaris actually means, just means common. So you find this in a lot of botanical names um, as the second title. So it comes from the word alchemy because one very um, notable feature of this plant is the way that it catches dew drops um, or water drops. I'm sure some of you have seen this before because um, this is a very common plant. When you see it holds the water for a long time and it has, it's covered in these tiny hairs and it sort of gives this illusion like the water is this ball of sort of liquid silver. Uh, it really looks beautiful. Uh, this photo does not do it justice. Um, if you've never seen that, before, um, just look out for it because um, once you look for it, you can see it all the time. So alchemists who were trying to um, create gold out of other, um, other physical components, they thought that the, particularly the dew collected from this plant, probably because it does look kind of like liquid silver, um, they thought this might help them and, and I don't think that it did, but, but you know, it's beautiful. And it still could be magical for other purposes. And just one more illustration from one of my favorite figures in botanical illustration, Elizabeth Blackwell, the author, illustrator, engraver, and publisher of A Curious Herbal. Um, so she was a very industrious woman. She obviously did this on her own and she, um, like self-published and she was actually the first woman to um, illustrate an herbal and do all the engravings herself actually. And she made, she published this book um, as a sort of updated version to the traditional herbals that already existed to include a lot of plants that had more recently arrived from the new world. 
So her husband was a sort of very dubious physician who ended up in prison for malpractice. So she would um, collect the plants and do the illustrations. And then she would visit him in prison to get the medical notes about the plants and then transcribe them and then um, put this all together herself. And then, um, yeah, in order to raise the funds to get him out of, out of prison, so. Yeah, very interesting character. And this is, this would be a, an engraving done to a copper plate and then hand colored with watercolor. So that is a little bit of information about our plant. Um, I'll just pull up the photos for a minute as well, the reference photos. Let me get them to both fit on the screen. Sorry, it's somehow not letting me do the screen share of both leaves at the same time. Can I switch between them? You only see the back of the leaf, right? Right. Okay, well. Um, that's okay for now, actually. So we are going to, I'm going to show you because the front and the back side of the leaf um, have two different colors and can be approached technically a little bit differently. I'm going to show you how to do both, but I recommend for the class, um, if you are um, a beginner, to intermediate um, to choose one um, view. And I would recommend the back view the one that I'm showing now because um, it's a bit like more well-defined and um, might be a little bit easier. And um, if you are more advanced or someone that just works particularly fast, then you can do both at the same time um, but you'll need to draw them first. So let's get to that part. Okay, so could everybody get the images now? What do you recommend for beginners? Oh, I, I recommend um, the view of the back of the leaf for beginners the view of the back of the leaf only. For more advanced, um, you can do both. And of course, when the class is over, you will have seen me do both. You can of course do both later. I just don't know like um, if you will have time to do both today, uh, right now. Um, okay, so I need, I need to once again, find my desk view.
Oh, there's a question. Draw with HB or softer. Actually, I would say um, draw with HB or harder. So I actually started out with a HB. Um, well, when I was doing the, the first sample of this, but I'll show you from the beginning. And then I ended up switching to an H for the details. But you know, if you only have a regular 2B pencil, it's gonna be fine for today. So I recommend making your drawing a little bit larger than life size. I know that might not even make sense because you're looking at a photo. Um, and so maybe you don't know um, full life size of the image, but you can see here, um, okay, this leaf is about the size of my hand. Whereas um, in real life, it's probably about half that size. So you want to start out. Um, you want to start out with basically a rough outline of the whole shape so that you can determine the scale of it and the position of it on your paper. So you can just start with something like, like this. And then we have our stem here. And then I find it useful when, let's see. Are you actually able to see my pencil lines very well? No. No, I'm gonna make this because when I start mixing the paint, it's good to be able to see everything, but I'm gonna change my camera view or, so you can see what I'm doing. Make it closer for the pencil drawing. Although it's really hard for me to draw this way. You know, now I have the the camera directly over my paper, but that's okay for this, um, for this intro part. I'll, I'll use a darker pencil too, so that it's easier. Because I already have a drawing that I'm gonna use um, for the actual painting. So, okay. Um, yeah. So you can, can see, see it a bit it. better now, right? I can even do one more thing. Oh no, I think that's actually worse. Okay, forget about that. Okay, I'll just draw a little darker. Okay, so I like, I drew this sort of general shape to make sure like that I have the scale that I want. And then in this case, you can really use the veins of the leaf to help you with the shape. So now it looks kind of like a water or something. But 
But again, don't draw it as dark as I'm drawing it. I'm only doing this so that everybody can see it. You guys got that point, right? Um, because I have another drawing that I will use for my painting that is very light. And I knew that you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So that's why I'm doing a separate drawing just to show you the drawing part. So notice I am not drawing the spikes on or, um, this jagged edge. I'm not drawing that yet. I'm only drawing the most general shape of the leaves right now. Okay, so like you can see that this line that I started with, that's more general shape. I mean, it's still there. I don't need it anymore. Um, normally, especially in this beginning phase of the drawing, I would do it just as light as possible because um, You know, I, I, I don't need those lines anymore. It's just a guide. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this so that you can see all the steps. But for your drawing, um, even this outline, now we're gonna add the jagged edge. So we're not even gonna need this line anymore. So normally I would do that very light and this, sort of final step that's going to be the outline that we actually use this I would do a little bit lighter um, a little bit darker over the the lighter if you think that you've done it too dark um one thing that you can do like once I've added this jagged edge it's quite difficult to then erase this other line that's underneath it so you if you feel you've gone too dark with your guidelines, you can erase them like just to the point where you can still see it um, very faintly, you know where it is, but it's as, sort of then as light as possible. But again, since I'm actually not going to be using this drawing, I'm just not even gonna worry about it. And if it's light, but it's still visible, um, again, like that's fine because we're going to paint over it. So it's, it's fine if you can still see some pencil lines. you might notice that they they sort of change direction in the way that they're facing so all the points they sort of curve towards the middle and the middle one is at the very top is straight and then they start curving in the other direction
So once you've gotten to that point, um, that is actually enough. Done. This is the drawing I'm going to use today, so it's a lot lighter, um, but you still can de definitely see um, my process in the drawing. You know, it's um, a personal preference. I don't really mind if you can see a little bit of the drawing in the final um, painting because like right now, it's not really, um, well, you can spend one hour painting a leaf and you can spend one week painting a leaf. You know, there are different styles and this is um, a little bit of a quicker style. So I think it's okay. Um, so in a minute, once I start adding more color, it's not going to be, um, you'll be able to see more clearly. So I'm going to move this back up so you can see the paint box as well. And so that I can actually reach the paint box. Making anybody dizzy. So go ahead and just comment in the chat box, say finished, if you're finished with your drawing. Okay, so if you're one of the people writing finished, um, you can just take a moment to clean up your um, drawing a little bit. So again, you're probably not going to really be able to see this too well on mine, but you can look um, where there are some, you know, in the beginning, I use this bigger white eraser to um, erase the bigger lines. And then when I get to this stage, and I just want to try to erase some smaller lines in between that I don't need anymore. I just use this little eraser, but you can also use the corner. You can also cut these and cut off a corner. Yes, it's hot pressed paper. I always use hot pressed paper for botanical illustration because I find it um, to be better for fine details. So you can um, erase a little bit here and there. Just clean up your drawing a tiny bit. Okay. So I'm going to start, especially in, with your drawing of the back of the leaf. So see how the, these veins are really light, like a lot lighter than the rest of the leaf. So we're gonna be using these guidelines that we drew. So I'll just reference this other drawing. We're gonna be using these guidelines in the painting, but um, because those 
parts are so light, I would actually use a little bit of this lifting technique if they, if those are darker lines to just very gently. I'm not like scrubbing with my eraser. I'm just gently dragging my eraser over them just to um, lighten that up a little bit, but so that I can still see it. Um, on the drawing I'm gonna use, I've actually just drawn it quite light and, and that works too. Okay, so, and you know, if you do this to wipe off your uh, eraser, you know, make sure that your hand doesn't have any lotion or something on it because this can actually form a resist on the watercolor paper. You don't want to get any anything oily on there. So it's always a good idea to wash your hands before you start. Okay, so this side is going to be the back of the leaf and this side is going to be the front of the leaf. But again, if you, um, it's fine to just do one side. So the first thing we need to do is prepare some color. Um, I'm imagining that people might have pretty different, since you might have joined this class spontaneously. I'm just going to move this out of the way while we're mixing colors so you can see better. So um, we want to create a very, we want to start out with actually this lightest color. That's how we're going to start. So when um, you're mixing your greens, um, you want to, for this, um, yeah, you can choose either like a um, cadmium lemon or just a re regular cadmium yellow or hue. Um, and it's going to be a quite yellowy. Um, I know some of you are looking and thinking probably like that's white, but but it's not, it's a very light yellowy green. Um, I recommend to use a phthalo blue for the mixing. Um, you might have something called an ultramarine blue and this granulates, um, which no. I'll go into the different pig. I'm going to go into the different pigments, especially for mixing green because it's spring. I'll go into this in a lot of depth in the spring botanical watercolor workshop. But for today, um, I'll, I'm only going to touch on it. So I'm just adding very small amounts of the. Um, this is just on its own. This is what the cyan blue looks like in case you're having trouble finding that in your palette. Um, if your watercolors are new, you definitely should test the colors out um, before you mix with them because sometimes they look really different. Like, I mean, this looks basically black when it's in the, in the tray but it's actually a really bright blue. Okay, so I'm gonna see what I've mixed here. Okay, you can probably barely even see that because it's so light, but that's actually what I want for this very first layer. Um, it's just a very, it's the cadmium lemon with a tiny, tiny bit of blue and a lot of water. So the proportion of water to pigment is very high for this first layer. Okay. So I'm happy with that color. Okay. 
And I'm going to use it in the beginning. Sprichst du Deutsch? Um, ja, ein bisschen. Uh, ich sehe dich falsch rum, ist das normal? Oh. Oh, it switched. That's weird. Let me get that back to the right. Um, so one really important thing with watercolor is to be able to control the amount of water that um, is on your brush, like how loaded up it is with your paint. Um, I've switched to a much smaller brush now, by the way. So I always have a paper towel here, um, not for testing the color. So I have a separate piece of paper. It's a little hard for me to fit everything on the screen together, but you can see I've moved now the piece of paper for testing my color off to the side so that you can see the painting. And, um, and I always have a paper towel here. And so you'll see the way that I use it in a second. So uh, this is something interesting. So I mixed my color, but as I've just been talking to you and had this little funny thing with my camera, the um, pigments actually started to separate. So the, my cadmium mineral-based pigment was heavier than my phthalo um, chemical-based pigment. And one rose to the top and the other sank to the bottom. So I, you sometimes um, can get tricked because you think you mix one color and then you go to it and it's a different color. So I have to remix it, um, just stir it up a bit when that happens. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, oops, let me get, okay, this is the back, is I'm going to paint the lines of these main veins here. I'm not worrying about making it too perfect right at this point. Because it's just the first layer. But it is very, very transparent, extremely transparent. Probably it might even be a little bit difficult for you to see. So I'll hold it up as well in a second. So just keep in mind, this is the lightest color in the leaf. Um, in the first layers with the watercolor, you want to start out quite light and always very transparent regardless. But in this particular case, um, we're starting with the lightest form because I want to block them in so that I can see them so that I don't paint over them later. Um, you could also draw two parallel lines to show the veins, but I find drawing two parallel lines that close together a lot more difficult than actually just controlling the watercolor paint. 
Um, so I think this is the better way to go to block it in this way because they do have some thickness, right? But um, let's see. And I am painting them a little more even than they actually are. And this is fine because what comes next to it is gonna be darker. And yeah, you'll see the way that that works. Won't be a problem. Just gonna go ahead and continue into the stem as well with the exact same color. Um, I think I am going to add, cause I'm noticing that there are some, the things on the back of the leaf are actually the darkest part, right? But there are a few larger ones that come off that are lighter. So I'm just freehand gonna block some of those in. One thing that's actually kind of nice about using the photo is that you can zoom in on it. Um, but you also don't want to get too carried away. If you wanted to um, like accurately draw every single one of these really tiny, darker veins, you would need to make your painting um, larger, actually. To get in there, paint all that detail. It's, I mean, yes, it's very impressive when you see a painting, especially in reproduction, and you don't know the original size it was painted at. Very impressive to see something with a lot of detail but um, some of the main components of this, some of the main differences are actually scale and, and time, of course, time spent. But very often, if you see a, a, an extremely detailed painting, it's been painted, um, like if you see it online, it's the original painting is usually much larger. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up so you can hopefully see what I've done easier. Um, when I see it on my screen, the color looks a little gray. But um, it's actually a really light green. I hope people are able to see that. So for the next step, I'm actually now going to add some shadows that occur. I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm just gonna work on further defining the structure, the leaf structure. So I need to mix a darker and also bluer green. So I'm actually going to use the same combination of colors. Oops. But this time there's going to be a little bit more blue and we'll see how that looks. Okay. 
really easy to get too much. Okay, I think this is good. Um, one thing with watercolor, you know, the, the light is coming from the white of the paper. So, you know, you can always go darker, but you can't really go lighter again. So you always want to make sure that every layer is very transparent. So let's see what you can see. We're mixing the color. Okay, so I'm going to start adding further defining like, remember I told you that I wasn't paying too much attention about the shape um, or the width being too precise on my first go on these veins. So now it's because I'm just gonna further define them at this point um, using the shadows. So underneath, I'm gonna add Is that just one side of the vein or both sides? Um, well, I'm using the photo as a guide. So like noticing, I've only done one side at this point, but I am noticing in the very middle, um, I see some shadow on both sides, especially at the bottom. Can you see that in the photo? Like I see it on both sides there. Yeah, I see that when I'm looking at a larger image. Yeah. Yeah. And that okay, actually up the middle of the leaf, like in the fold. So that's interesting. That's a little different. Could you please show where you're painting because it's flu, I can't see it. Oh, what do you mean you can't see it? Like it's too far away or? Your, your hand is on focus, but not the paper. Uh oh. If I move it around. If you if you put an eraser on the paper, 
then the camera will focus on that and not on your hand. Does that help? You can try it. I can't really tell where it's focused actually. From... Is that better or? Maybe put the razor a little bit more in the middle. Does that do anything? Something else? Looks like your phones are in a really, really bad 2G connection. That's the problem. It's the, it's the kind of picture quality. You just can't. Oh. Yeah, it looks very pixelated. Oh, no. Hmm. Let me see then. Let me try. Let me just quickly try something. Let me just see what happens if I turn the Wi Fi off. Maybe that would be better. Then I have to rejoin. Is that better? Is that more clear? Yeah, now I see better. Yeah, it's better. Okay, I turned the Wi Fi off, so I guess. It was just the Wi-Fi connection. Um, okay, so I'm continuing to add the shadows now with a bluer, with a slightly darker and a much bluer green. Um, I've done a little bit now. I'm going to keep going with that and do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm just further defining these veins, which are really like um, the outstanding feature of this leaf, I would say. And especially when you have these lighter parts that you want to preserve um, in a watercolor painting, it's good to really focus at the very, very beginning on defining them so that you don't accidentally paint over them at a certain point later on. So again, the paint I'm using at this stage is very, very transparent. That's really almost one of the most important things. Um, you can't really make too much of a mistake as long as your paint is very transparent because we're gonna build up the painting in layers.
Okay, now I think, let's see if this is where I want it to be. I might just slightly darken a couple of the more prominent shadows. Just I think at this point, I'm just gonna darken them by going over them with the same paint as before. This time paying even closer attention to some of the edges. So I'm just going over the most prominent shadows. Oops, I accidentally, I accidentally went over one of the parts I wanted to leave light. So I'm actually, let's see what I'm doing. I'm turning it to the side because it's easier for me. And I'm just using a clean brush to remove the, with just a quick scrubbing motion, clean brush to remove the part that I don't want to have. There are some places where it's like a very, very light shadow, um, not so much as a defining shadow, but more like a moth um, that just kind of gives the lecture. So I'm going to add in a little bit of that, but very, very transparent. And I'm just going to start now working more into the leaf. So going to mix the color now a little bit greener. So this shadow layer was a little bit of a bluer green than the actual leaf. So now I'm just going to the actual leaf color, the biggest part of the leaf. And I'm going to start filling some stuff in. But taking great care to avoid these light veins that I've sort of blocked in, um, blocked in once using the light wash and then blocked in again, reinforced with the shadows. So now I'm just gonna paint in the direction of the sections of the leaf. and start filling in a little. And I'm painting over the shadow that I blocked in previously. Another thing that I like about the phthalo blue um, at the using it for these early stages is that it's a stain pigment. So even if you paint over it, it's very unlikely to that you lift it up. So you can be pretty loose about it. I'm also painting into the jagged edges. I'm not worrying about my wash being, oh, I'm running out of paint here. I'm not worrying about my wash being too perfect, too perfectly smooth, because I know there are gonna be a couple more layers after this. And I also know that um, I actually don't want the leaf to look too flat. So this kind of, when you use the watercolor in like a little bit of a sketchier way, um, it can get 
this a little bit of a rough texture. This is actually, as long as it's very transparent so that it blends into the other layers, it gives a more organic feeling to the leaf itself. So I'm gonna keep going. Um, again, taking great pains to avoid the veins. Right now I can tell like, I really don't have enough contrast between the color of the veins and the color of the leaf. But, um, so my next layer, I'm going to have to go a bit darker. But you definitely have more control if you don't go all at once um, too dark right away. So I'm also leaving a little bit of space where these, even where these smaller veins were. I'm not painting around them as carefully as I am for the main veins, but I am avoiding them nonetheless. Um, because when I see it, when I look at the photo, they don't look as perfectly defined. They look a bit more like blended in with the leaf. So that's why I'm being less, less precise about those. But I do want to leave some indication of lighter lines there. It'd be good if people can keep themselves on mute since we have so many participants. I can't tell where the background noise is coming from, but it adds up if it's coming from a lot of different people. If you have a question though, um, feel free to just I might not see everything that's happening in the chat while I'm working on the painting because I'm looking at paper. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question at any point.
Are you going to be putting some of the darker green in the stem as well? Yeah, I can do that right now, actually, since I've got a darker green on my brush. Um, just add it in on that one side for now. Then we'll add, we can add a brighter green later. If anybody is having a difficult time um, getting into those small shapes and controlling your brush, um, usually the biggest problem is that you just have too much water. Like you have too much on your brush and it's puddling. So in that case, um, like if you fully load up your brush, you have a lot of water on it and you just you can take remove a little bit with the paper towel that's what the paper towel is there for um you also can control it by only putting the tip of your brush in when you load it up for paint but yeah like i know it sounds like some some a really simple thing in theory but I think one of the biggest challenges for people just starting out is being able to control the amount of knowing, controlling and knowing the right amount of water to have on their brush. This is very much connected to brush control. <coughs> and important for painting details. Nearly done with that layer. Again, I've painted in this last layer where I added the local color over the shadows. From the previous layer. I paint it around the lightest parts, but over the shadows. So I'm thinking I can see that I need to adjust sort of almost everything still. I need to still adjust the color in some places. I need to adjust the tonality in some places, but because my goal with this painting is really to preserve these light veins. That's sort of my number one goal. I'm going to reinforce them again, this time with some darker shadows.
sometimes I find it when I'm mixing colors, I'll mix two versions at the same time, um, just to be a little more efficient. And I mean, so far on the color mixing side, the specimen has been quite easy because I've up to this point, I've only used two colors. Just the yellow and the blue. So this time around, I'm going to make my paint a little bit thicker, less transparent. And I'm going to focus in on some of the darker shadows. And now that my paint is a little bit thicker, the need for precision is also higher. So it's only now that I'm starting to pay more attention to the contrast levels that I might want to end up with. The earlier layer was more blocking in my painting where the highlights are, where the shadows are. It's very possible that I'll still have to adjust shadows um, one more time, but I'm at least now starting to um, look at my reference photo and try to be a bit more accurate with the how dark the shadows are.
adding a little bit of the of the yellow or green just to see how that's mixing in with those shadows. Of course, in between layers, you have to make sure that things dry completely. Oh, I switched now the thicker version of my shadow color to now um, a little bit of a thicker version of my local color. The local gummy, color. Gummy, gummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy, gummy, yummy, 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 yummy. yourselves, guys. Don't forget to mute yourselves. Gummy, 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 and yummy. Gummy, yummy needs to mute. Although that was adorable. Do not worry at this point if your painting looks a little bit disjointed. That is completely normal at this stage. Um, as you work your way in more and more with the local color, this disjointedness is going to um, get less and less. But now I can see places where, um, where I need to unify a little bit more. So in that case, I'm just going over it with a bit of the local color. And I'm, you know, the, some of these side veins that I chose to isolate early on, um, I'm finding are competing a little bit too much with the central veins. So I'm going over those with a light wash of the local color as well. I'm just gonna turn this so I can get a better edge here. So those are getting pushed back now because they're far less prominent. But this is the nice thing about blocking in those, even those very subtle side veins, blocking them in early on, is that now, even as I push them back a bit with the local color, going over the whole thing um, in this, to have this unifying effect, I can definitely still see them, which is really nice, because, you know, that's kind of how it is in the plant. You see, you sort of see them and you don't almost. They're, they're there, but they're pushed back. So that's exactly what we're going for. And I'm starting to see now um, a glimpse of how things might actually come together and that this is possible with this painting, that it isn't too disjointed or it is gonna come together, all these different parts. I can start to see it now. Um, so like with more experience, you're sort of able to 
anticipate that that will happen and relax a bit. But if you're a beginner, um, I know that this stage where the painting looks very disjointed can be disconcerting. But when you, when you notice that, you should really not worry because if you don't go through that phase of the painting where everything looks contrasty or like that the whole painting looks like it's not coming together, that it's falling apart. Um, if you don't have that phase of the painting, then the problem is that the resulting painting will be really flat um, actually. And we don't want that. I think a flatter color painting is even worse than a disjointed watercolor painting. Because you're also going to find, as you do more watercolors, that um, it's easy to overwork things. And sometimes you'll look back on this stage of things where it was very disjointed or just at the point where you started to unify things and think, oh, I should have left it there. Sometimes. That happens to, to me a lot that I overwork things. So I'm just, I'm not going over I noticed in this part that I think I just didn't have quite enough contrast to risk it with this unifying layer yet. So I just added in a little bit more in sections again, work back over into this other area maybe in a similar way. Cause now that I've said it, I'm thinking about it. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make my painting flat. The other thing that can make your painting flat is if the colors are just not transparent enough because we're working with a lot of layers here. And the effect of layering is only visible um, if the layers are transparent because then you get this accumulation and um, you don't get that if the colors are opaque. Not in the same way, not with watercolor anyway. Okay, so this is coming together nicely. I think I'm just going to use I have from earlier a bit of like quite bright lime yellow. I'm going to add to the stem before I forget. Painting over this slight shadow that I'd given it earlier. And I'm just going to let this creep up a little bit into the veins, just blending it there. Because I do see that effect. I'm going to use some of that. Sorry, you can't see it up here, but I'm going to, it's just a very, very light um, lemony yellow that I'm using now. I think I really want this top area quite light. So I'm just going to add, just to unify it enough, but not 
not bring it much darker. Oh, I'm not going to have enough time to do the other side of the leaf, actually. I thought I would be able to demonstrate both, but no problem. You'll just have to come back. So I want to start to wrap this part up so I can add some of these really fine dark lines. It's really tiny things. Because that's going to be fun. I want to make sure these veins pop out just enough. Okay. So now I'm going to add some details. Um, <laughs> as if this wasn't already pretty detailed. Let's see, what's the smallest brush I have with me? I have a size one. Oh, there it is. I have this other brush I want to try to. So sometimes for these, um, we are not going to paint every single one of these really fine. Um, if you even zoom in a little bit, like these are super fine, um, darker veins in between the light ones. We're not going to paint every single one. I already told you that. But we're going to try to do like a textural effect. So when it comes to things like that, I usually do a little test first. Because like what we want to do, we want to give like the impression of lots of detail. But at least for today, we're not going to do every little line. And like I said, this painting is not at the right scale for that anyway. That plays a big role. Okay, so I'm going to mix a much darker color here. So I added a bit more blue. And now I'm going to add a hint of red because I need to dull the color. And red is the complementary color of green. So this makes it actually like more brown. So I'm adding a little bit of alizarin crimson. So 
So I think I'm happy with that color. I mean, a really good brush, it doesn't even have to be that small actually, because it should be able to form a very fine tip. And when you're doing very fine detail, you know, you want your brush to be quite dry. I would completely dry it before. And then I would test it out. Let me bring this up here actually. Just test out making these marks. It's like a certain, it's going to involve a certain flick of your wrist and that you're going to do over and over again. You want to practice the right motion, the right movement, and you want to also make sure that you have the right consistency, that the paint is thick enough, that it's gonna show up because this is something that's going to happen like as a one shot. Um, you want to practice getting the motion correct you want to do, um, not necessarily like the perfect copy of every detail. Okay, so let me see about this. To be safe, I'll start off in the, some of the little bit darker areas, right? Because it won't be as noticeable. You also want to make sure that you vary your lines a bit. Um, you don't want it to look too mechanical. You want it to look organic. Um, as I'm going into the lighter areas, I've just made this a little bit more transparent. And now there are some lines that you can see continue a bit. So that's interesting. They're not, there are actually a couple of different kinds of lines. At some point, could you raise up the painting? Because I'm having difficulty seeing the, the effect of it, what you're doing. Absolutely. This is so tiny, but I have to do a little bit more before you. Sure. Can... Okay, thank you. And I, you know, you, this is fun, but you also need to be careful not to overdo it because really it's something that you have to look close for. And even though it is everywhere on the leaf, you, you want to paint it like to mimic the perception, the way that you see it and not necessarily the way that you know it to be. Okay, so let's hold this up. So you can see how um, there are two different types of things. Some are a little bit longer, some are a little bit shorter. And in the darker areas, I've used a thicker paint. And in the lighter areas, it's a little bit more watered down. And I would say that, um, I don't know if it looks a little bit different for everyone, the screen calibration or whatnot, but I would say that for me, my painting um, in real life looks quite a bit lighter. Overall, everything, um, it looks quite a bit lighter than what I see on the screen. So the idea of this is not to be too painstaking because if you are, it's also not going to look organic. It will look too contrived. So it's like the tip of my brush is almost just dancing across the paper. Like that's why I did this little practice of, um, of the movement itself getting down a certain movement that I want to repeat over and over again. Okay. 
So it's a, it's a little bit of a different way of painting compared to all the layering. And this is part of the reason why I really wanted to do, um, especially the back of the leaf with you all, it's because it has these darker lanes and the lighter veins. Um, so two very different approaches, which is quite fun. We get to do two different things here. It's like some of these lighter veins also become the, the darker veins, if you look at it. It's, it's pretty interesting. So we can use that to our advantage. What's your dark? So, I mean, some of it is formulaic as in, okay, if you've painted leaves many times, you kind of know if it's this type of leaf that, yeah, I want to start um, like with the, with the lightest veins, or I want to start with the shadows, um, something like that. But then sometimes the technique really needs to be adapted to the specimen itself. Um, and I think that's especially true when it comes to texture. Okay, so I just noticed we need to mix a little bit more. I sort of ran out of my um, my dulled green and I started to use a little bit of the shadow green and I realized right away that it was missing that the red wasn't dulled enough. That's better. So the finer the detail, the drier the brush. So. What's nice about these texture layers is that you can also like, I mean, not that anything in watercolor is Fake, but you can hide a lot of the things if there's something that you want to hide. It's an opportunity to do that. If you had a blotchy wash or a layer you didn't, you weren't so happy with in one area, you can just add a little bit more of the texture there. So, I mean, I really do think this type of layer is a lot of fun to do. And I really need to check myself to make sure I don't overdo it. Um, if I did, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It would just mean that my painting would start to look a little bit more stylized and less um, naturalistic. 
which, um, I mean, that's also kind of a taste thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm gonna try my best here to hold back. And you can decide for yourselves, of course. I'm gonna go lighter now. Which just means adding a little bit more water. How are people doing with this? Are you finding an approach um, with the texture that works for you? If anybody has a comment, wants to say something, feel free to unmute yourself and, and speak up. But I know the process can also be very meditative. It's taken me a lot of practice to remember to like keep telling everybody what I'm doing as I'm painting because it's also really easy to get absorbed by the task at hand. I'm not attempting to go into such detail. This is really like, um, stylistic, I would say. So, I mean, different people are gonna approach this in different ways. That's totally, totally fine. I have a question. I'm mm -hmm. way behind this. I mean, I'm not into, um, at this point yet. At some point you use like a yellow, um, like a very light yellow to do some detail, I think. Is it possible or is did I um, that something? was that was like the first step that we did. No, 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 yes. But at a certain point afterwards, did you use like a yellowish green again or did I understand wrong? Glaub sie meint, uh, du hast irgendwann das Ende vom Blatt ein bisschen heller gemacht. 
yeah. yellow for the stem, wasn't it? For the stem and just going up into the little veins. That was a bit okay. more okay. yellowy green. Well, I did use a yellow or a green, like in some of the, um, you know, I alternated as I was doing the local color with a bluer. So I mean, like just the main body of the leaf. I alternated the whole time between a yellower green and a bluer green. Okay, so, so was, maybe, okay. So it was not another yellow, it was the, no. Okay, got it, thank you. Okay. So now I'm just going to do a little more adjusting and a little more unifying of um, like some places where I feel that um, texture layer is standing out too much. I think I might just push it back a tiny bit by just, um, adding the transparent layer over it. And I think that's going to be, well, has to be my final layer for today. Is it always necessary to do that or is it more because you would like to have everything blend together? Um, I mean, nothing is necessary because, you know, you have to decide what you want for your own painting eventually. But um, I'm just doing it because I want to blend things more. But like I said, like if these darker marks, um, I mean, I quite like them personally, but I think it starts to look a little bit too stylized if they're too prominent. So I'm just trying to avoid that, um, like for more for the sake of realism here. But if I do like it actually, and if you like it and you want to leave it more prominent in your painting, um, that's really um, totally up to you because it's your painting. So like the way that I teach my classes, I mean, I try to teach a kind of botanical style, but I, really try to explain to people like why things work the way that they do. Um, and we spend a lot more time going into specific techniques and color theory and why, why certain things work with watercolor, certain pigments and others not, all these things, um, all these details details so you can really also develop your own style and have the knowledge and the confidence to decide yourself like um, actually what's the most important thing in the painting for you or what's the thing you're trying to emphasize in the painting um, what the painting means for you it can be different for different people and like I want to give you the tools to be able to figure that out, um, even like outside of the class. So my goal is not to have everybody um, like have identical paintings in the end. Um, today is a little different because we're also all using the same reference photo. Whereas like in my classes, we often are all painting from different specimens even. So everyone has completely different paintings, but I'll focus the class around a specific technique that everyone can apply. How many people do you have in your watercolor classes? Oh, um, those are a lot smaller. Usually the, the regular workshops, they have like a maximum of be 14 people okay and then you know it's not everybody some people watch the recordings so it's usually around 10 people on any Thank given you. day 
Yeah, it's a different, it's a much more intimate um, feeling than this, but this is also, I mean, this is a lot of fun. I mean, look, 73 people stayed until, until the very end. So I'm, I'm beyond flattered that you all showed up and happy to paint with you. And um, yeah, does anybody have any other questions? I, so I have the spring botanical watercolor workshop starting, it's the same time as this class, but starting in exactly one week. Does, what, does anyone have any questions about that workshop? Is there a color or are there like two colors that you should definitely have for next week? Um, I, I'll email the class about that, but you mean just two colors or because there's a list of colors, but I already have to set from winter botanical, but I was today I was like, hmm, do I need another blue? <laughs> Oh, no, then you'll be fine if you already have. No, Dad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Get into more specifics later, but yeah, that's totally fine for the first class. On what day you will teach in the Zoom? Because I'm from Israel. What day is an hour? Um, yeah, so the spring botanical workshop, it takes place at the exact same time as this class. So um, Tuesdays, six to eight, Central um, CET. So whatever time this took place for you, it'll be exactly the same. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. If I may, a question regarding the pencil outline. Would you leave it like that? Can you um, speak up a little bit or speak into your microphone more? Okay, we'll try again. Uh, about the pencil outline, uh, should we erase it or is it better to leave it? Uh, what would be the technique? Um, you sh should at this point, like once you've started your painting, um, if there are some lines like on the outside of the painting, you could try to erase those, but I think it's a little bit risky to damage the painting with the eraser. And um, Okay. Thank you. If you are not happy with the amount of pencil that you are seeing at the end of your painting, then you can try a couple of the techniques that I suggested at the beginning, like um, just starting out with a lighter drawing or um, like gently going over your drawing with the eraser right before you start the painting. Um, I gave a couple of ideas at the start of the class, but like also like I said I mean I don't think with this quicker style of watercolor I don't think that it's necessarily a negative thing if you see a little bit of the original drawing just have a look what she did very clever just one other pitch um, for people who are really um, beginners with watercolor. You feel that um, this was advanced or, or you liked it, but you want to go um, deeper into the basics. We also have an intro watercolor workshop starting Friday. And that is not necessarily only focused on botanicals. It's with G Caruso, who's a really amazing instructor, um, especially with beginners. So that's um, that's another option for color. Um, let's see. I'll bring 